Hi, welcome to the second unit on monitors and condition variables. Your learning objectives here are to learn how to use signal and wait to wait for an event to occur or to signal that an event has occurred. So the basic principle on using condition variables is that you need three different pieces in your code to make them work properly. The first thing you need to, is a logical condition. This is something that the thread needs to become true to make progress. For example, in a bounded buffer, um, a thread need to wait may need to wait for there to be some space in the buffer or may need to wait for there to be some empty space in the buffer if it's a producer. Um, with each logical condition, you can associate a con separate condition variable. Second, you need state variables that can be used to determine that condition um, because you want to be able to test is the condition true or not to say can the thread proceed. So an example here would be to measure how much space is there in the buffer. With that, you can tell is it empty or is it full. Finally, you need a predicate to test if the logical condition is true. This is just a C expression that tests that is true if the condition is true or false if the condition is false. With these three things, we can now write code that will synchronize threads um, to correctly wait for some condition to become true. Here's an example of the producer consumer case that we've seen many times before. The code here is written using pthreads, although I leave out the pthread prefix on all the functions to make the code shorter. So at the top we have our shared variables. We have two condition variables, not empty and not full. The name of the condition variable is the logical condition that the thread is waiting for, waiting for the bounded buffer to not be empty or to not be full. We have a state variable which is a counter to keep track of how much is currently in use. Then we have a lock that protects everything. Let's look at the producer first. The produce1 function begins by acquiring the mutex lock, and you can notice it ends by releasing the mutex lock. This is just like a monitor in, the, in a language like Java automatically acquiring the lock for you. We then have our while code that tests the predicate. So it starts out by saying while slots equals equals n, meaning that all the slots are full, it will call cond wait, waiting on the condition not full, and passing in the lock variable because it needs to release the lock while it's waiting. Um, once it wake, wakes up from cond wait, it'll again test to make sure that slots to test to see if slots equals n, and if there are if slots are all still full, it will go back to sleep. Otherwise, it will continue, and it'll fig, find an empty buffer, assign it to my i, fill the buffer, and then increment the number of slots in use. At this point, because it knows at least one slot is filled, it will call con signal before releasing the lock. The consumer code is very similar. It begins and ends also by acquiring the lock. In this case, it has to wait until there is at least one slot that is filled, so it will say while slots equals zero, meaning there are no slots occupied, cond wait on not empty and release the lock. If this wakes up, it will again test to see how many slots have been filled. It will then, in the myj variable, find a filled buffer, it will use the myfilled buffer, decrement the number of slots in use, and it knows that at this point at least one slot is not in use, so it will say con signal on not full before releasing. So you can notice we have our logical conditions, which is the buffer is full for the producer, we need to wait for it to not be full, or the buffer is empty for the consumer, we need to wait for it to not be empty. With each of these logical conditions, we have a state variable that we can use to compute the condition, which is slots, the number of slots currently in use, and we have a predicate, slots equals equals n, or slots equals equals zero, and then we also have a mutex lock that protects all the data inside the monitor. So in comparison to semaphore, there's a couple of key differences. With condition variables, you have to maintain state variables yourself. For example, in this case, the slots counter. With semaphores, the semaphore has its own counter to keep track of some state, although sometimes, as we saw in the reader's writer's case, you might have extra state variables you need to protect with a separate mutex. Another difference with monitors is with condition variables, you use two separate constructs for mutual exclusion and for waiting. You use locks for mutual exclusion on everything and a condition variable with wait and signal operations for waiting. With semaphores, you can use semaphores both for mutual exclusion and for synchronization, which can make it more confusing. Um, the other thing is with condition variables and monitors, you always acquire the monitor lock at the beginning and always release it at the end. With semaphores, you may acquire and release the lock in other places in your code. One other thing you can do with condition variables is have what's called a covering condition. Suppose you have many threads that are waiting for different things. In this case, on the right, we have a withdraw function where a thread would like to wait until there's enough money for it to withdraw a certain amount of money. This means that every thread is really waiting for a different condition based on how much money it wants to withdraw. One option would be to have a condition variable for each different amount of money that is needed, but this would be very complicated. Instead, we use what's called a covering condition 
which is a more general condition than any particular thread is waiting for. And whenever that covering condition changes, we can then use broadcast to wake up all the threads. Each thread can then independently check to see if the condition that its own logical condition becomes true before proceeding. So let's see how this works. We have a standard um, data structure here, which has a lock and has a condition variable. The deposit code is very simple. It acquires the lock, it updates the amount, and then it will broadcast saying that the condition, meaning in this case the bank balance has changed, and then release the lock. Notice that it always broadcasts whenever it changes the balance because it doesn't know what particular balance somebody is waiting for. The withdraw function um, will acquire the lock and it will check, is the balance below the amount of money that I need? As long as the balance is below the money needed, it will call pthread conduit to wait for the balance to change. In this case, the withdraw function may wake up multiple times while the user deposits different amounts of money, but it will only continue when it actually withdraws the right amount of money. So one question that comes up with condition variables is, do you have to hold the mutex while you're signaling? Suppose we have some code, the waiter here, that is saying, while not done, cond wait on some condition variable or release the lock. We have a signaler that just sets the variable done equal true and then calls cond signal. What can happen that's bad? Well, there's a problem that we don't have atomicity between changing the state variable done and invoking the signal. Suppose, for example, the first thread executes the while code to check done. The second thread then sets done equal true. The second thread then executes con signal, and the first thread executes con wait. Remember that signal has no history. In this case, the waiting thread, when it waits, will not see that the signal was called and will wait forever. The key thing here is you need to hold the lock while signaling because you need to make sure that between changing the state variable and signaling that nobody else can do anything in the middle there. So another question is, what if you signal when nobody's waiting? With semaphores, if you signal when nobody's waiting, that signal gets remembered for the next caller of wait. Condition variables, however, have no history. So in this code here, we have one function called done, which will basically wait for the done condition, and then a signal done function that will signal that something is done. If in this case, we have a thread that calls signal done and another thread that calls wait done, the wait done code will not notice that broadcast was already run, and the waiting thread will wait forever. This is why you have to have your own state variable so you can always test if the condition is true instead of relying on getting a signal, because the signal only helps you if it changes in the future. It doesn't help you if the condition has already become true. So this would be the correct way to do it. Here we have a state variable boolean. We basically check in a while loop while not is done. We're going to wait. And in the signal done, we're going to set this done flag variable to true before broadcasting. This means that any thread that comes in and calls wait done after signal done executes will see that is done is set and will correctly continue executing instead of waiting for it to change. This is the end of part two on condition variables monitors. Please take the second quiz on condition variables monitors before coming to class.